we are different as any two collaborators would be. But when it works well, it is much bigger than just the simple arithmetic sum of the two. I'm Yunong Jian. I'm a professor in the physiology department of the University of California at San Francisco. I'm also an investigator of our Hughes Medical Institute. Lily Jen, a professor at University of California, San Francisco. I'm also an investigator of Howard Hughes Medical Institute. I was born in Fuzhou in China. I was born in Shanghai, China. We met in college. On the hiking trip, our graduation trip. It was uh, his graduation trip, but I tagged along. <laughs> we went to Caltech to study physics, and we got to interact with a number of our students on what they were doing, really interesting. We started collaborating right after graduate school. Since 74, so 42 years. Mm -hmm. We complement each other very well in temperament and in our ability. We started studying dendrite development about 17 years ago. The key question we we're trying to address is how does a neuron develop its a neuronal type specific dendritic morphology? A neuron has two major parts. There is axon, which basically sends the signal to the target cells. So that would be the output of a neuron. And there are dendrites, which are like neurons' antenna. So that receives a signal. We study dendrite development primarily using fruit fly. In the course of doing that, we figure out how certain gene function to can control dendrite morphogenesis. In the field of fruit fly research, the genes are named by the phenotype, meaning when we have a mutation in the gene, if it shows something unusual, trigger mutants are among the first early ones identified as fruit fly mutants. It's named shaker because the flies shake. We figured out what we felt was short protocol. It takes about a couple hours to record from the nerve muscle preparation. We use that to screen behavioral mutants. From our study, it looks like it could be a defect in potassium channel. Actually, quite a number of the channels have been linked to human disease. To give you an example, there's a gene in fly called mini-brain, and it shows dosage-dependent effect on the dendrite morphology. It's human ortholog. It's a gene called dirk one a which has been strongly implicated in both Down syndrome and autism. Although we have learned quite a bit about the control of dendrite morphogenesis, but our knowledge is very incomplete. So our long-term goal is to have a more complete understanding. For what we have been doing all these years, what's really fun, I think two aspects. It really is like working a puzzle. You know, it's we see interesting questions, and at the outside, we really don't know what the answer will come out to be. The other aspect, equally interesting, is uh, working with our colleagues, our students and postdocs. It's actually very much their discovery. We were extremely lucky to have three great mentors, our PhD advisor and postdoc advisor. They really shape us as scientists and we're trying to pass on what we learned to our students and postdoc. We have together almost 150 students and postdoc. Over 100 of them are faculty members or group leaders in various institutes. Those we find really great satisfaction 